Well, hello, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am Greg, here to do a reaction to the announcement of the winners of the National Book Awards for 2019. They were announced last night, if you're watching this video the day that it is posted. Um, I actually kind of debated whether or not I wanted to do a reaction video because, to be honest with you, the winner for the fiction category is the one that I was the least excited about on the shortlist, probably. But, two things. Well, first, I had already done reaction videos to the long list and the short list, so I feel like I need to be a completist and do the whole thing. And two, I found some interesting books in the other categories, which I haven't, uh, have not really discussed before. So I thought, just, just to talk about some of them, it would be worth doing. So, uh, the thrust of my videos before really focused on the fiction literature category, and the winner in that was Trust Exercise by Susan Choi. As I said, this was the one that I had been the least excited about of the nominees. I'll give you a quick rundown of the plot, and I think there's a cue in their plot description that indicates why the National Book Foundation and the jury that they had would gravitate toward this book. Even though, even the feedback that I've gotten about this book from people on the previous videos has not been great. So it's kind of interesting to me that it won. So. In an American suburb in the early 1980s, students at a highly competitive performing arts high school struggle and thrive in a rarefied bubble, ambitiously pursuing music, movement, Shakespeare, and particularly their acting classes. When within this striving brotherhood of the arts, two freshmen, David and Sarah, fall headlong into love, their passion does not go unnoticed or untoyed with by anyone, especially not by their charismatic acting teacher, Mr. Kingsley. The outside world of family life and economic status, of academic pressure, and of their future adult lives fails to penetrate the school's walls until it does, in a shocking spiral of events that catapults the action forward in time and flips the premise upside down. What the reader believes to have happened to David and Sarah and their friends is not entirely true, though it's not false either. It takes until the book's stunning coda for the final piece of the puzzle to fall into place, revealing truths that will resonate long after the final sentence. As captivating and tender as it is surprising, Susan Choi's trust exercise will incite heated conversations about fiction and truth and about friendships and loyalties and will leave readers with wiser understandings of the true capacities of adolescents and the powers and responsibilities of adults. And it, it's in that section right there that I think you get that clue, that it will incite heated conversations about fiction and truth. I think that is an easy thing to grab onto and hold onto in this time and with this, this particular media landscape when the idea of fact and fiction and whether alternative facts and things like that, a book that gets at that kind of theme would seem to be very appealing. That's actually a much better description of the book than the ones that I have seen before. It sound, makes it sound a lot more interesting. The ones that I'd read before just really did not appeal to me except for that last little part about fiction and truth. Because even I am not immune to that. Uh, I, I hear that something's gonna question the idea of fiction and truth now and I, I, it's like my ears just perk up. But the book itself didn't sound great. And like I said, of all the books that have been on the long list and the short list, this is the one that seemed pretty consensus, like people have not liked if they've read it at all. And I can't help but feel that this doesn't feel like an exciting climax to the National Book Award for Fiction as it would have if, say, the Nickel Boys or uh, Unearthed Were Briefly Gorgeous had gotten into the mix. It seemed like Disappearing Earth seemed, if I had been uh, asked to guess, my, make a prediction, I would have said Disappearing Earth probably would have been my prediction for a winner in the, in the fiction category. But I also don't put a lot of stock in the National Book Awards. They sometimes have really oddball choices. I don't really look at them as tastemakers. I think their lists are interesting. Uh, especially in terms of getting recommendations. I found some recommendations through the long list. Uh, I read uh, Blacklight by Kimberly King Parsons. I, I really want to read Sabrina and Karina, and uh, it's been good for that, but they've made enough odd choices in the, ba in the past that this doesn't feel off-brand for them, and just like, it's just kind of another thing. Where I really got excited was in the nonfiction winner, which is The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. I was totally unfamiliar with this book, which is part of, partially why I didn't talk about the nonfiction nominees in, the, uh, in my previous videos, because I just wasn't familiar with any of them. But this one sounds fascinating, and I really only paid attention to it because it won, so I do have to give the National Book Foundation credit for that. The premise is this. In 1961, Sarah M. Broom's mother, May, Ivory May, bought a shotgun house in the then-promising neighborhood of New Orleans East and built her world inside of it. It was the height of the space race and the neighborhood was home to a major NASA plant. 
the post-war optimism seemed assured. Widowed, I remarried Sarah's father, Simon Broom. Their combined family would eventually number 12 children. That's a lot of children. But after, Sam after Simon died, six months after Sarah's birth, the Yellow House would become Ivory May's 13th and most unruly child. A book of great ambition, Sarah M. Broom's The, Ivory the Yellow House tells a hundred years of her family and their relationship to home in a neglected area of one of America's most mytholo mythologized cities. This is the story of a mother's struggle against a house's entropy and that of a prodigal daughter who left home only to reckon with the pull that home exerts, even after the Yellow House was wiped off the map after Hurricane Katrina. The Yellow House expands the map of New Orleans to include the stories of its lesser-known natives, guided deftly by one of its native daughters to demonstrate how enduring drives of clan, pride, and familial love resist and defy erasure. Located in the gap between the Big Easy of tourist guides and the New Orleans in which Brown Broom was raised, The Yellow House is a brilliant memoir of place, class, race, the seeping rot of inequality, and the internalized shame that often follows. It is a transformative, deeply moving story from an unparalleled new voice of startling clarity, authority, and power. I mean, sign me up. That sounds amazing. And I'm really disappointed in myself that I had not paid attention to the long list or the short list in this category to notice that book before, because that sounds like something I would absolutely love to read and in fact cannot wait to read probably next year at this point. But yeah, shame on me for that. I am going to skip poetry because I struggle with poetry. Um, it's just not, I don't, I'm not very knowledgeable on it, if nothing else, so I'm going to leave it alone. I was very surprised by the winner of Young People's Literature because it, it appears to be nonfiction and the other nominees were fiction. And I, I, I can't, I'm not as knowledgeable about this category to know if there have been nonfiction winners in the past. But that seems surprising. However, the book does sound interesting. It's 1919, The Year That Changed America by Martin W. Sandler. 1919 was a world-shaking year. America was recovering from World War I, and black soldiers returned to racism so violent that that summer would become known as the Red Summer. The suffrage movement had a long-fought win when women gained the right to vote. Laborers took to the streets to protest working conditions. Nationalistic fervor led to a communism scare, and temperance gained such traction that prohibition went into effect. Each of these movements reached a tipping point that year. Now, 100 years later, these same social issues are more relevant than ever. Sandler traces the momentum and setbacks of these movements through this last century, showing that progress isn't always straight, a straight line and offering a unique lens through which we can understand history and the change many still seek. And that sounds really interesting. Um, I am surprised that a nonfiction book ended up winning out in this category and even having a place in this category, but that sounds like a really good book. So that's another one I will probably be adding to my TBR. And then in translated literature, the winner was Baron Wenkheim's Homecoming. I, be I believe the, because the, their website is not laid out very well. I believe the author is Laszlo Krasnor Krasnohorkai. I don't know if I said that correctly. And the translator is Otilier Mulzet. I don't know if I said that correctly either. And this one is set in contemporary times, telling the story of a Prince Mishkin-like figure, Baron Bela Venkheim, who returns at the end of his life to his provincial Hungarian hometown, having escaped from his many casino debts in Buenos Aires, where he was living in exile. He longs to be reunited with his high school sweetheart, Marika. Confusions abound, and what follows is an endless storm of gossip, con men, and local politicians, vividly emoking the small town's alternately drab and absurd existence. All along, the professor, a world-famous natural scientist who studies mosses and inhabits a bizarre zen-like shack in a desolate area outside of town, offers long rants and disquisitions on his attempt to immunize himself from thought. Spectacular actions are staged as death and the abyss loom over the unsuspecting townsfolk. Well, as it sounds interesting, I'm not immediately going to add that to my TBR like I will be the two nonfiction books, but it definitely sounds interesting. I feel particularly interested in um, the idea that he is attempting to immunize himself from thought. That sounds very interesting. Uh, I have had not heard of this book, this author, or this translator, so again, kind of good on the National Book Award uh, or National Book Foundation for pointing this one out to me. So I, I will keep an eye on this one. I'm not going to put it on my TBR right this second, but I'm definitely going to think about it. And, you know, that's probably the best you can hope for 
from a book award. And with that, I think we are basically done with book award season. We've already done the Nobel Prize, the book award, uh, the, not the book award, the Booker Prize. Uh, now we've had the National Book Award. Um, I'm sure everybody's going to be doing their own year-end wrap-up videos starting next month. Uh, possibly even some decade wrapping up videos since that is happening as well. But uh, it's going to be a while until we have another book award to really talk about and that will be the Pulitzer Prize in April. So I'm looking forward to that. But I would be interested in knowing if you, like if you have read Trust or Exercise and liked it, please drop a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Defend the book a little bit because to me it just doesn't sound all that interesting. And I would have been much more excited, as I said, uh, if um, the Nickel Boys and or Unearth Were Briefly Gorgeous had been in contention and they did not make the shortlist. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you're as excited about the nonfiction winners in uh, the nonfiction category and the young, young people's literature category and what you think about this work in, in translation um, and any other, other thoughts you might have, you know, it doesn't have to be related to the National Book Award. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I think that wraps this one up. So as always, I will just say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It is always, always, always appreciated. And if you enjoyed it, I hope you would be willing to follow along on whatever it is that I do here. And until next time, happy reading.